Hey, I'm Andrew Connell. This video is an overview of one of the chapters in my course, Mastering the SharePoint Framework, that's available for uh, purchase on my site, Voitanos.io. This overview video is going to give you an idea of everything that the chapter uh, covers. You can learn more by checking out the description uh, in the notes below the video. Um, if you got any questions about this chapter or about the course in general, just make sure you drop a comment uh, below in, in the uh, below the video and I'll be sure to get back to you. So with that, let me get out of the way. Enjoy the overview to this chapter. Hello and welcome back to my course on Mastering the SharePoint Framework. In the previous chapters of this course, I showed you how to create your first SharePoint Framework project. And then we picked through the structure of the project while we touched on a lot of things in the project. But in this chapter, we're gonna focus on web parts. Client-side web parts might be the most common things that you're gonna build for SharePoint environments. And in addition, if you work with Microsoft 365 and SharePoint Online, web parts are the cornerstone to the other types of extensibility options that we can create. For instance, when you wanna create or use the SharePoint framework to create custom Microsoft Teams apps, you're actually gonna create web parts. And the story is the same when you wanna create a single page app or a spa for a SharePoint site. These other scenarios using SharePoint framework to create apps for Microsoft Teams and spas for SharePoint sites are covered in the advanced web parts chapter in the ultimate bundle of this course. But in this chapter, we're gonna focus on building your first client side web part. So not only are you gonna learn how to create a client side web part, but we will cover some of the common things that you're gonna run into when you're creating these web parts. For instance, you're gonna see how to modify the default code that's provided uh, for you, and you're gonna see when your changes are running in a live uh, web part as well. And from there, you can implement your own custom logic. I'm also gonna show you the different project templates uh, that you can choose from when you create your web part. And along the way, you're gonna learn a few TypeScript and JavaScript tips like barrels and good code optimization and more. Now, not everyone who signs up for this course is a seasoned web developer. So if that's you, then you're gonna pick up a few of these TypeScript things along the way. And in addition, you're gonna learn how to change the name and the description of your web part as it appears in SharePoint and how you can use a different icon when it's listed with other web parts as well. And then finally, you can see how to set properties on your web part to be used for configuration and allow users to make their own changes to the settings as well as uh, how to persist these changes for um, the next user who's gonna come along to use your web part. Now, I think it helps when learning a new technology to have a scenario in mind as it's easier to grasp the data and focus on the technology rather than some contrived scenario. So for this course, I'm gonna use the American Space Program. Um, all the data in the, is in the public domain so I can avoid any copyright issues and plus might be a little bit of a space nut. Okay, one last thing. This course is 35 plus hours long and it contains over 150 lessons. I just can't keep every last demo updated to the most current thing to show you the latest and greatest changes in the projects. So always refer back to the first two chapters of this course uh, in the chapter called Your First SharePoint Framework Project and Digging into the SharePoint Framework for the latest Yeoman Generator updates. But if you ever have a question, just leave a comment below in the lesson. That wraps up the introduction to this chapter on creating web parts. Let's head into the next lesson and let's get to work creating some web parts. So I'll see you in the next lesson.